Welcome to unpaidmoviecritics.com. I'm here with the fixliest fixels of all the fixels, author, dancer, oh, published, published critic, author of her new novel, which I think everyone should pick up, which is titled The Fixliest Fixel of All the Fixels, Miss so Becky Fixel. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Screenwriter, who is just telling me about his up and coming movie that is going to be filmed, you said Kentucky? Theoretically. Theoretically in Kentucky. Yeah. So, and we have some exciting news this week, just so you know. I have got our podcast available on seven networks right now, and we're working Yay. on the last three. So, where you can currently find us, I mean, if you're already listening to us, that's great. I think we are up to seven listeners now, so it's beyond Probably. your mom and grandma. I mean, we're doing something. Uh, we are on Spotify and Anchor. We're on Apple Podcasts, Breaker, CastBox, Pocket Casts, and Stitcher right now. Wow, that's great. Right? This was fun assignment over the week, but it worked finally. So nice. I'm still waiting on three more for approval. Then we'll be on all of the major networks so people can listen to us wherever you pull up your podcasts. And we'll get maybe like double digits, which I think is great. Right. Eventually we might get to a double digit. <laughs> I mean, it, it was nice pulling up. Um, I use CastBox, pulling it up, and I sent you the screenshot yesterday that I could actually find us on there. And I was like, yay, yay. finally somewhere. That's so, great. Yeah. It's very exciting. Good job. Thank you, Becky, for all that hard work. All that tech work. That you don't want to oh. do. I'm like, I can buy the URL. And, and you did. It. And we do and have I, the website if people want to visit, which is unpaidmoviecritics.com, where you can find all of the episodes currently available. So Yes. And eventually, if we have other information, we will put it on there as well. Yes. Sounds like a plan, Becky. And you are awesome. And congratulations for all your hard work. Congratulations on my hard work. <laughs> but no, I'm not going to lie. I may have done most of that while watching your movie choice this week. Wow. No. All right. Oh. So, okay. So, our movie choices this week, <clears throat> this is how we decided to pick them, is we decided to pick two movies that, you know, are kind of outside of our own box that people would not, are, are one of our, are some of our favorites, but that no one would ever think we would like. So my choice, and we'll start with there because yes, please. You know, is called the last the days of what was that? What nothing. <laughs> it, it was called the, way. the last days of disco, and it stars Kate Beckinsale, one of her first movies. Um, Chloe Sevigny, uh, Robert Sean Leonard, Mackenzie mm -hmm. Aston from The Facts of Life, and I'm trying to think. Uh, Matt Kieslar is in it. Matt Ross is in it, and it's directed Chris by Whit Stillman. Chris Eichmann, yeah. And it's directed by Whit Stillman, who uh, did Avalon and Barcelona. And I think this was the last movie in his trilogy of, um, they had, he, had a, he had a trilogy, or he called it a trilogy, I believe. I could be wrong, don't quote me on that. But this was, um, this was my choice, and so Becky, was exposed to the to the world of Whit Stillman for the first time, I'm assuming. Yes. And so you say that this is one that people won't think that you would like, but to me, this kind of follows the trend of the other movies you've made me watch. So it's, really? Yeah, because it's this moment in time in these people's lives and this little bit with transitioning into something else. So in that aspect, it reminds me of several of the other movies we've watched that you've chosen. That's kind of funny because I'm, I'm telling you, every time I see it, and every time someone, I, I'll, I'll tell people this, they look at me like I'm a psychopath. And they're like, this is what you want to see. You know what I mean? This is what you want to watch. Um, and this is what you're exposing me to. And it, it, it's such a talky movie. It's not a, um, yeah. there's not much really that happens. I was going to say, that is my complaint about the movie, as well as a big movie release that came out this week. It was a long time to go nowhere. Yeah, it really was, honestly. It, and it, 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 It's a Whit Stillman movie, so that's what he kind of does. Okay. Um, if you've seen, he just, his last movie was also with Kate Beckinsale. I don't think he, he doesn't, he has a long time between films. 
th that was called Love and Affection, I think, or Love and Attraction. It was an Amazon release. Okay. And he reteamed with her for that. Um, and it was more of an English foppy costume drama. See, Love and Friendship. Okay, now see- Love and I Friendship, would, thank you. I would probably watch that because I love period pieces. And, right. And that's where these kind of conversational movies where, you know, that did, don't necessarily have to go anywhere. Those fit better in period pieces to me. So it was a moment in time where disco was dying and these friends were also transitioning into other things or trying to figure out what they're doing with their lives and where they wanted to go. And, you know, most of the people in the movie were kind of, you know, yuppie asshats. Mm -hmm. I mean, or is that they're being positioned as being. And actually everybody in the movie for, for really, I'm trying to think of any, what the character, they tried to make Chloe Sevigny's character, I guess the hero. She's yeah. She's like the yeah. focus, the interest. Yeah. But I mean, still she was kind of the same, which is what she kind of fit in all of them with. She kind of grew a little bit throughout the thing and her like bump of a transition, but that was pretty much that was pretty much it. I just, I don't know why this movie is, is one of those films I just kind of gravitate to. Um, why do you love think, this one? I think Kate Beckinsale is so good. I think she really nailed a lot of things she did. She's and it was one of her 90s. first roles. She's very, very 90s. Very like the stereotypical lead 90s kind of bitchy girl. Yes. That's... But she's not bitchy. She's like that subtle bitchy well she is a little bitchy like a little bit but i don't think she comes some you could you could make a choice of whether to, to she's not necessarily okay in comparison she's not nancy allen bitchy no. who's psychopath bitchy um she's more of a it's i call it the subtle bitch which i kind of think is fun you know i mean and i think chloe sevigny's character was more of the impressionable one where she's trying to figure things out. Um, but I don't think she was really impressionable. I think she was just more quiet or meek. She didn't, like, she knew what was happening or what was going on. But even Kate Beckinsale is telling her, you know, sorry, my cat is trying to get in a box of toys. Um, well, who but wouldn't? They're plush and he needs to be in a box, apparently. Yeah. But <laughs> she's What's like, in the box? Yeah, speaking of that... We'll go on to that and I'll, I'll, we'll segue in a moment. But, um, you know, Kate Beckinsale's like, we would have been great friends in college, but I would have been more popular because I'm prettier. And I'm just like, that's bitchy. Let's be real. It is, but it, but in her, the way she did it, I thought was really well because I thought she actually meant it. But I don't think she actually meant it. Maliciously? I, right. Sometimes those people are just so full of themselves. They don't understand when things come out that they're actually the bitchiest things in the world. And you're just yeah. kind of like, I had a friend and, and I, you know, this is, you know, many moons ago that did something and she's like, you know, she was an actress mm -hmm. and she had a thing where she was talking about it. And she's like, well, you know, I'm like a sitcom. I have a best friend and I'm of course friends with her best friend and we're all sitting there and she's like, and my best friend is cute, but she's not as cute as me. And, and, and she was going on about that. And I was just like, they were all like uncomfortable about it but to her it wasn't bitchy to her that was just her reality and i think that was like it doesn't make like, it right no that's I, kind I mean, of the but, mean girl reality anyhow right so you know it's i don't know to me that although the line i did text you it says never date anybody in advertising made me crack up because i was like true eh. you know? <laughs> <laughs> welcome to our world but, you know, to me, like I said, it was one of those movies that just took a long time and then it didn't, I was excited at first because I was like, oh my God, it's under two hours. All of the new releases right now are two, 215, 235. Right. Eternals is 245. Is it really? Yes. And I want to oh cry a God. little. And I'm like, my bladder cannot make this. At least these I can pause. But mm -hmm. I'm like, Okay, it's under two hours. It seemed longer because it was just, it, it didn't have, it wasn't going anywhere. There wasn't a ton of story to it, but like, no. said, but you like that. And I don't understand why. <laughs> yeah. I don't really understand why I liked, you know, it was one of those things like 
and you, I guess you could make a parallel to this and Dazed and Confused, even though Dazed and Confused, I thought had a lot going on with the oh, there characters. Was maybe too much going on in that one because it's just little pieces. It, it's here and so much. Yeah. And yeah. that was more of an improv style. And this was, you could tell this was not improv at all. This script was followed to the letter. Yeah. It, it was like very specific. Um, but I think in some kind of the tone, I guess you can kind of make a case for it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and that was, that was just what, that's just what he does with Stillman. It's a very talky kind of, we're just literally recording a dinner conversation and it could mean nothing. It, I, I don't know what, what really, it's funny. It really is kind of funny. And some of the stuff makes no sense. Right. Scrooge McDuck, all of that little stuff. It's kind of like these weird little parallels and it's like, mm, okay. But I just like it. I think it's a fun little film. And I think um, you have to be in the right place for it. Right. And I, I mean, think. I don't think. I, I don't I think it's for say, everybody. I don't no, think it's for and everybody. I, I won't say I hate it. But it's definitely not one that I would pull up on a regular and go, oh, I want to watch this movie. Because I think that's the reaction most people have. Yeah. To be frank. I, I don't know what it is that made me so drawn to it when I saw it. It was maybe because. I was in that place or you know like I said it's back a sale. time thing and you you like those yeah. little pockets of time I think right I kind of do and I you know Kate Beckinsale is my pre-gay crush um I mean so you know yeah I see it you know, good. she fits she fits with my my, my pick like Kate, Mary Louise Parker Kate Beckinsale I mean it's it's all right there yeah and when you tell people that they actually kind of appreciate it well yeah like oh that's so sweet <laughs> like, I know Right. <laughs> so speaking of what's in the box, have you watched Dune yet? I have not watched Dune. I saw it come off yesterday and it was like my choice is rewatching Carrie or watching Dune. And I decided to rewatch Carrie. Good choice. Good choice. Because you know, I really want to see it, but I keep hearing, you know, okay. And I, I think, you know, and we'll, we'll get talk more about it next week when I finally do see it, but it's, it's one of those movies. It's one of those stories I think is unfilmable. I, I, I've been saying this the whole time. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think it was bad, but like similar to your movie choice, it, I mean, this one was 2.35. So long movie and they're billing mm -hmm. it as the next great Star Wars and the next epic and sci-fi and all that. But it doesn't really go anywhere. And it stops at a really weird point because they want to make a sequel, which is fine, great. People will love it. Five minutes in in my notes, I actually wrote down, this movie's not for me. Five minutes in. Yeah. No, like, you know, and it's, I don't know. It's that one that we watched some of the 1984 version. I mean, oh. the graphics are better and all of that in the new one, obviously. But, you know, they don't have the clip art um, shields around them. <laughs> but it, it just seemed like it was going nowhere. And I'm like, looking at my watch, I'm like 20 minutes to the end this should have like we should be doing something at this point we're over two hours into this and we haven't yeah, well done anything that's a long time to world build it's tough you know when you you know and the director uh who did uh, the new blade runner film and I, I really enjoy his work um he when i heard he was doing it i was really excited and then the reviews started coming out and i was like kind of what i thought was going to happen kind of meandering kind of too long yeah. and that's i think the story i don't I think the story of Dune is it's just a hard long. One to translate. Yeah, there was that Sci Fi Channel miniseries that came out. And it was more like a stage play, mm -hmm. but it was Dune and they did the whole thing. And I watched it. And Matt Kieslar, ironically, from Last Days of Disco, is in it. See? And he was, I think, the lead. It's a connection. <laughs> um, I, I liked it. I got through it. Um, but you've never gone back. But I will never go back. It was like, I was I was sick. I think I had like a cold or something. And I was like, this is the perfect thing to do. So I would tune out and fall asleep and I could come back in. And uh, it was great when I was sleepy to really put me down. Right. And <laughs> I think that's just the story. I just think, I think the story of Dune is unfilmable. I think it's it's just a book and it should stay a book and people need to stop trying to adapt it. it I mean, it's just not possible. There's so many other books with that kind of you know the one the hero the sci-fi and the different worlds and all of those that 
could translate well into movies. Yeah. And series, like, I don't know if it got good reviews or not. I personally really enjoyed it, but I love the book, Ender's Game. The rest of that book series could do really well. But, yeah, the first movie wasn't that good. But it's a tweeny sci-fi thing. So. Right. Well, and you look at Dune and it's more hardcore sci-fi. Yeah. Mm, which I think Dennis was the perfect choice because he did Arrival and Arrival was pretty hardcore sci-fi. Like it was a sci-fi film. And yeah. that was with Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner and Forrest Whitaker. Loved it. It was amazing. So I think it was he was the perfect choice for this. But I, I just think Dune is just one of those films that is going to be polarizing. It's never going to hit a mass audience mm-hmm. and people need to stop trying. That, I, I'm at that point where I'm like, you, they've done it this is the third iteration i think now and you're just kind of like you just okay. you're just beating a dead horse at this point if this i mean yeah i don't know i've heard both ways that one they're trying to get the second one filmed now but i've also heard that they were filming them concurrently so it might already have some in the can for the second one but i don't know that it's going to get the the big numbers that they want and need to actually make the second one and they stopped it at a really weird spot so it's weird and you know now with the streaming which i think again we've talked about with the warner brothers the day and date streaming they they really saved their own slate this year because they had some crap movies but i mean (laughs) i mean like wow i mean some of the i mean at the same time a lot of people are like well why go back to the theater because it's there and it's available but right Warner Brothers isn't, especially when it comes to their superhero ones, isn't expecting Marvel numbers. They're expecting Warner Brother numbers. Well, yeah, but Dune would be one of those movies you would go yeah. to. The, I, I would have gone to the theater in a normal world to see it because I would be interested. And because on the big screen, the sprawling yeah. landscape, I mean, that would be really nice to see. Right at this moment, I would kind of go, well, I don't know. It's almost like doing homework. Right. And I mean, yeah. some of the stuff, like, it is a gorgeous movie. It is done very well. And some of their ships, like, their, uh, the ships they're flying, are they use kind of biomimicry, and they based them off, like, um, dragonflies. Oh. So, and I was like, that's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. And then, so there were some design changes and things that were interesting to me. But then it's also in that, fu- so far into the future that they've kind of reverted back to minimalism and, like, basic linen. And I'm like, yeah. I'm a little confused on that, but maybe we'll see, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, I get it. Well, anyway, let's go to your choice this week. Yes, sir. I chose. Um, yes. What? What were you going to say? No, you chose. No, you chose. Yeah, I chose Carrie, choice. 1976 Carrie, based on the Stephen King novel, which probably is the first horror film that like actual horror film that I saw. I mean, I'm sure I saw some at friends' houses when I was little and wasn't supposed to, but my mom exposed me to this. Uh, We had a scary movie night when I was 14. And I was telling her that we were watching this and she's like, I still love that movie. And it's, it's so weird. There's some things like watching it now. I'm like, that teacher's a total bitch. She knows she's being set up. She knows, you know, step in, be an adult you know you know okay so there's so much to unpack with carrie and but it's also no, the 70s. no one will have time it's the 70s 1976 brian de palma first off and you could tell it was brian de palma the way he shot things um because he has a a certain way that's all i'm gonna say you know there's just a thing like you can tell that from you know uh Oh my god, I'm blanking on that movie with Angie Dickinson, and I have it signed. I can't remember what, what it was, but he just has this thing. Uh, I love Brian De Palma. I think he's a great director, but there are some things you're like, oh, this one. I actually thought watching it again, and I Sissy Spacek will yeah. forever be carried. Oh yeah, there's no one that can do it. Please, no more remakes of this crap. Right. I, I, I'm done. Like, no, just keep it here. Which there, I found there was a remake, like, oh gosh, because The Craft 2 came out early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Apparently there was, because I was, I had to rent both of them on Amazon because I don't have them 
there was another version made in uh well the craft legacy was 2020 yeah which was a piece of crap please don't watch it i didn't i mean i won't i wouldn't mind watching um the rage which is free on i love the rage I would watch that one again, but I'm like, I don't know what this other one is. And a bunch of other ones, there was another one coming up that they filmed like mid 2010s that was called Carrie. And I was like, well, they did one Carrie. I believe that was the remake with Chloe Grace Moretz. Okay. And she Ah. was Carrie. Was it any good? No, don't watch it. Okay. Uh, Ansel Elgort was William Katz's character and Julianne Moore was the mom. All, I mean, not bad casting, except for Chloe. I think she's too pretty. Like, yeah. there's just, come on now. Well, it, you know. You're watching Carrie, and I know she's the outcast. She's the weird girl. There's always one of those in every school. We had one. Right. I'm sure you did. But, I mean, even before they dressed her up, she she was a little, like, normal or ordinary, but she wasn't ugly. No, she's plain. Yeah, but. I mean, but not unattractive. No. I'm sorry, William Cat's hair, you can make a case for being more unattractive than Sissy Spacek. Oh, that hair. Yeah. I was literally like, that was the most shocking thing was the hair at William Cat's <laughs> hair. I literally went, that's a character. Right, that has to be a wig so or something. Um, it wasn't, I don't I think. What does he have for hair now? Do we know? Uh, you know, I met him not too long ago. And it was, he, he just hair. Sort of, yeah, yeah. He has that curly, the froey hair. Um, But he, I I thought everybody did a great job. The acting was great. I thought it was really fun. Um, It was great seeing Edie McClurg as a small part in the background, if you watch, um, as an extra. My friend Terry is in the movie, uh, Terry Bolo. Really? She is one of the, yeah, she is one of the, um, and she's in the whole movie. She's in the prom scene. She's in the beginning. She's in the, when they're, in the field she's very noticeable she's almost as noticeable as Edie mcclurk and does she and, die you know they don't show her dying which is kind because of unfortunate would, like, i need to ask her if you're in that movie i would want to be one of the people that was in the prom like that shows the death or something you know yeah so, she was in the prom scene she was well, in the prom i know scene. but if you don't see her die you know <laughs> you see her run in terror oh okay fair you have to send me like a screenshot or something so I can look for her next time. I will. Yeah, it's, she's very noticeable. And it's what I did actually like, I noticed a lot. They actually kept a lot of the same group of people mm-hmm. in the, like the, the volleyball scenes and the field scenes and the gym scenes. So you kind of felt like it was a little click, even though they didn't have lines or whatever, but you felt like they were all right. this high school click. And they don't do that as much anymore. Now it's like, oh, come in for a day and go. And we don't really care if you're there. But <clears throat> this they did a really good job with that the the whole thing it was fascinating to watch how much nancy allen got hit john travolta hits her twice right the gym teacher hits her like and um <laughs> i was just like wow a teacher i i didn't, i always knew that was weird because i was like they just she just go hauls off and starts smacking her i mean and that would and john travolta's character I mean, besides the fact of the abuse and all of that, you know, they had a very dysfunctional relationship. Well, I think so, yeah. Just a little bit. But I mean, he's he's willing to smack her and say all that. But then at the same time, he's willing to slaughter a pig, hang the blood up above, and help her pull it down to get back at one girl that got her in trouble because she was a bitch. Right. Oh, yeah. It was fascinating. Oh, like, like wow. she was such a sadist. It was um, ridiculous. Her character is actually her character is the. I'm not just the villain. She's the horror show. Right. And it's funny because I think Nancy Allen did such a great job because I was watching it again, and I actually sat there and I was going, you know, I wonder what actually is her home life like. Right. I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about that. Because and I know, like, intelligently, a- they didn't do that right. in the movie. They didn't show you that. I think that was smart. But because she did such a good job, I it, it made me want to know more about her character because right. that was so effed up. Right. And I mean, as teens, we all have relationships that aren't always the healthiest. So we mm-hmm. know that. 
I mean, granted, I say as teens, like when we were teens, not 30s playing teens. Right. But, you know, you know, so I mean, it was interesting to see that depicted, but then it wasn't necessarily put that it was a negative. No, they didn't. They made no judgment call on it. No, they're just like, yeah, she's getting smacked by her boyfriend. And yeah, that's all right. And then giving her a teacher. Right. And that was fine. But it's the 70s. So although I right. will say I did laugh at like their gym outfits and stuff. I'm like, oh, those styles are so back. Oh, I know. It's funny. Even the hair, like the, you know, because Nancy Allen had the fair yes. boss hair. I was like, wow, that's coming. I see people with that now here in L.A. sometimes. Dude, I saw some girl walking around in acid-washed mom jeans and a jean jacket the other day, and this girl had to be 18, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, Exactly. Why? But, you know, I, it, 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 there were so many things in this movie that was so great that I think people need to watch now. I mean, obviously, the anti-bullying message. Right. That definitely. And, and also, educating your children about their bodies would be you know although anti- the amount, i know it's there but the amount of um nudity at the very beginning always shocks it's jarring me. it's very jarring it was like that one fly and i mean i don't even know what it was rated at the time if anything um it was r i mean and now it doesn't even feel like a horror movie Honestly, no, it, doesn't. It, it feels like a coming of age drama and with it's a little kind bit of, of murder fun, with a little bit of murder and the the way the way that they positioned the mom piper laurie he does so good at playing a psycho oh my god she was so good <laughs> and you know it's funny when she was originally cast the rumor is that she thought it was a comedy oh so no. she was playing it and they were like no 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 no. and so it was kind of an interesting they had to switch. roll her back and say no you're just, roll you're just fanatic yeah and it was it was kind of interesting but she she really did you you saw that in her eyes where she the scene where she's talking to sue snell's mom and she's there that was such a good scene and it was a throwaway it was kind of a throwaway you don't really you know it's not one of those moments but because piper laurie did such a great job you go back in and that actually established her entire character for the rest of the movie to me right i mean and you can see she committed to that and I mean, the movie in general, like, I, I don't mind gory movies. I just don't like the Boo Scare horror movies. But this was probably, you know, the first horror movie that I really liked. Granted. When it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a lot of jump scares. No, it's it, not. It was, it was straightforward. But it also, I mean, it's, at the same time, I mean, she's bullied. At some point, most of us were bullied. So we mm-hmm. can understand that and we can, you know, empathize with that. But also when she starts realizing her powers and she can take control of the situation that's what everybody wants yeah i mean not necessarily you know burning everybody alive and smashing car or you know smashing people and flipping cars with your mind granted could be cool but that being able to take back the power in a situation is yes what is appealing oh so- yeah i 100 percent. i feel like Sissy Space that captured that she did. in 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 just everything she did in her movement and the way she changed her movements from when before she was Carrie when she was just Carrie White she was kind of meek and she had but then when she was Carrie her arms flailed and she was stiff and she was walking like that right. she did such a good job in you know the dual personality kind of coming out. And it's like, it's so sad because, you know, she was researching her issue. She had no help. She had no friends. She had absolutely no help in normal parts of her life. Right. And, you know, the, so, the teachers were jerks. And at teachers, I'm sorry. She, well, I mean. Betty Nazi, Buckley, which was fun. I mean, she her tried. Dying, like the thing slamming into her. I was like, okay, that'd give you a stomach ache or a bruise. That won't kill you. But, <laughs> you know, but. She kind of deserved it. I'm sorry. She, she did deserve up. it. She, you know. You know, she and then, did, everyone deserved it. Let's yeah. be real. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Sue tried to stop it, and she wouldn't give her five seconds to point out what was going to happen. Yeah, if so, Sue could only have said, "There's a bucket," 
There's a thing. I mean, well, like, she you pointed, know. She pointed up and she pointed to the rope and the teacher had to pull her out. So. Because, you know, it's like, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm glad that, you know, I mean, Sue was around for the sequel. Um, right. <laughs> but it was, it was irony. You know, that it was almost like the, the Shakespearean irony of Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if only Sue could have communicated, you know, if only Romeo had waited five minutes more and Juliet yeah. wouldn't have taken the poison and she wouldn't have known, if only the prior, you know. Right. But go that way, buddy. Buddy. Sorry, cat. But it's uh it's uh it's such a great film and it's so well done and it's so 70s. It's it such so a product 70s. of its time. This it's, everything. It is still something that kids today kids today could watch and enjoy i think 100 percent. i think it's interesting before i saw it you know again the other night i was like oh it's so 70s one of my favorite movies but still it's so there watching it again even with the soundtrack and the hairstyles and everything else i kind of kept going i wonder if he did he made it a little more timeless if it would have still but I kind of liked it more this time, being that it was is amazing. A, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I kind of liked it a little bit more this time, being that it was a, a complete '70s product. Right. Because even now, I don't know if you could write that and people would actually believe it. Right. Because nowadays, everyone's woke, and you know, bullying is such a thing. And it's like, I don't, I don't know if people would be like, okay, no one's going to believe this is going to happen. So actually, having it so stylized for a certain era, even though it probably wasn't intentional, really kind of helped it. I think so. You know, I think it actually helped the film more than hurt the film. Right. Which I think is kind of interesting. Like if you shot it today and you said it in the 70s, this is what it would look like. Right. And it's... And I think that works. It's a little time capsule. A look of 45 years ago. Mm hmm Which, you know, I mean, the cars, the music, all of it, it's perfect. Everything. So. It really is perfect. And, and as a side note, a lot of the filming locations still exist. Uh, you sent me that one. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed. I'm going to have to go do a tour. How far the, are they from you? They're not. Uh, it's a little far. The honey, the the actual gym mm -hmm. is in Hermosa, I believe. So it's not that far. And then. So it's something you could take me to next time I come on out there. Yeah, downtown where they have the pig farm. The mural is still there. Everything is really? pretty much still in. Yeah, everything is still wow. intact. I was obsessed uh, there. And I, was like, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to go now. But it's kind of cool. And the gym is still not burned up. Well, what obviously. they did was <laughs> they, <laughs> but the, the outside of the gym is exactly the same. It's a community center. Okay. And uh, so I, I, already, I already texted a bunch of people. I'm like, we need to do this now. You know, so. those articles might do well on your website. I'm just saying. What might the fanboy.com? I don't know. It's amazing. <clears throat> but yeah, it was um it was such a great, it was a great time capsule movie. It is. And I mean, I that, loved the book growing up. So well, and it was Stephen King's first horror yeah. novel and Stephen King's first horror film. And and one of the only movies he actually likes that was an ad adaptation of his work, which the fact that he can't like The Shining is still shocking to me at <laughs> some level. I know. Well, I mean, think about it. Like, as much into pop culture as The Shining is, you would really think that he would. I mean, people reference that movie all the time still. Oh well, yeah. I mean, but he—it was a different. It was a different take on yeah. his novel, and that was one of his things. But this one, I think, was fair. It was actually it changed it quite a bit. I believe the novel. If I'm gonna go back in time and. Don't flame me, anybody, but it was uh, Carrie actually, I think, flies at the end in the book. I don't remember and... that, but I remember raining blue stones. Yeah, she, well, in the movie, they actually shoot it. So if you notice in the film, the, the way that the house collapses, it mm -hmm. comes in holes. Yeah. That was because they shot it with boulders, like in the original novel, like in the it, stones rain down and that kind of really? crashes it. And they couldn't shoot it properly to make it work. And so they cut it. And they just made it like it was her collapse in the house and the house like kind of collapsed it on herself. Yeah, because I was wondering, I was like, I mean, seven years in design school and studying materials and architecture and all that crap. I was like, that is not how a house would fall apart. You know, that's the no. logical part in my brain going. And I'm like, 
why would they do it that way? But it makes sense if it's the stones that are, are, we're supposed to be doing it. And if you look closely in some of the scenes, you can see rocks hit them. Okay. As, as her and her mom are holding each other. In the uh, religion closet? In the room. Yeah, I believe there, there, are, big, there are rocks that hit. And okay. so you kind of see that they actually shot it like that. But no one would ever notice, I don't think. Well, and I was unless also, you know what you're looking for. I'm wondering if the actual end scene, you know, where the hand pops up uh, in the lot, because I was thinking that too, when Sue goes down to put the flowers in her dream in the lot, you know, it's covered mm -hmm. in rocks. And I was like, that's not Which what would weird. happen. Right. But because in the book it was rocks and they tried to shoot the rocks, that was the rocks. So and, that's interesting that they left yeah. parts, parts of the rocks in different elements, but not in the house falling apart. Well, and as a side note, that hand that comes up, that's yeah. just a SpaceX hand. She insisted on doing it. Well, good. She should have. I'm sorry. Jackson is um he's special today. So and I think that's a great, and it's a great segue, I think, to our conversation today. Which about is? films that are time capsules. Okay. Like, <clears throat> what are some of our, the movies that you look at and you're like, they are a product of their time that probably don't, you know, can't be redone. Well. Don't yeah. touch the magic. There is one, and you're probably going to roll your eyes. Every time I mention I like this movie, Jason does. But it is so much a period in time that you can remake it, but not as like it wouldn't have the same feeling. You've got mail. Yeah, oh, 100%. I mean, it's a you, perfect time capsule movie. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, I watch shows like older movies or shows, and I'm like, you can always date it now by looking at the cell phone, you yeah. know, the, the flip phones or whatever, the big bag phones, like the, um, the Lindsay Lohan parent trap one. When they pull out the big bag phone while they're driving, oh yeah, I crack up because my dad had one of those up until about ten years ago. So, you know, those types of things always crack me up. But you've got mail; just that sound alone takes you back. Oh yeah, I mean, and people that when you're watching it now, they're you know, people I'm sure kids don't. It know doesn't that. hold up, and they're like, "What is this randomness?" Like. Right. You know, it's it's the dial up of the AOL and the, you know, all of that. I mean, and honestly, even to the point of the pairing of Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. Right. Well, yes, but that's in the middle of their little cluster of films together. Right. You know, it's kind of funny. You kind of look at that and you're just like, that feels like a time capsule too. Yeah. You know, they did Joe versus the volcano. They did You Got Mail. They did um, Sleepless in Seattle. Sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> which I'm not a fan of much of them, to be honest. Even Joe versus the Volcano being the weird, absurdist kind of film that it was. Right. I just didn't, I never, I never was a huge fan of that pairing. Well, I'm Even like she'll probably watch that again because it might be funnier now, but. I think I saw that not. once, like when it came out and I haven't seen Me it too. since. But like, and I, then you've got mail. I love it. It's quirky. It's stupid, but it's goofy. And, you know, and that's yeah. what. I have to watch it when Jason's doing something else because, well, he doesn't want to watch that. But, <laughs> I mean, that's a time capsule. But what about the new movies that are coming out that have, like, the text messages popping up on the screen to help tell the story and stuff? In five, ten years, I mean, look at how yep. we communicate now versus even five years ago or when we used Instant Messenger. Right. You know? It's all going to be that way. And I, I always look at that. I always think, you know, in my general life, social media has killed creativity in, in one level. And in another level, I think social media has helped creativity because everybody can be a creator now in some point. Yeah. But it's almost like the dumbing down of creation. Like, you know, dancing on TikTok does not make you a creator. In my humble opinion. I mean, yes. Just but because then there's you're some... hot and you can, you know, dance around shirtless or partially shirtless or naked doesn't make you a creator it means people are ogling you that's all it means i'm sorry i don't mean no no that's fine but i mean at the same time tiktok has brought out some of these great storytellers like mm -hmm. have you seen the video of the um is it elise myers telling the story about her first date where the guy made her buy a hundred tacos <laughs> no i didn't see that Oh my God. First of all, her videos are hilarious. This story is just like a ride and a half. I will send you that link later. It cracks me up and I've seen it so many times. And it's just how she delivers the story. 
Right. So, you know, it's, there's, yes, there are people that are kind of dulling it and, you know, taking creativity and just going, oh, look, I've got a camera, I can do something. But I think in other ways, it's opening up other avenues. So. 100%. I, I just, I like working in social media for so long. I know the bullshit of it. Mm-hmm. And it's really starting to get to me a little bit. You know, it's like, but look, I'm posing under a, right. I'm posing under a waterfall, half naked with my boobs hanging out. And I'm going to post an inspirational message underneath. Yay. Live your best life. I'm but like, at the oh, same time, you're not that person's target market, darling. I, yeah. Well, no one is. It's like, it's not females you're not empowering anybody no it's not naked under a waterfall so guys can be like oh there's a hot girl like they'll get the clicks or they'll buy the clicks um you know all right right. so what what is your time capsule choice well i was going to actually say back to the future and it was it's interesting because it is kind of a timeless film but to me it's a time capsule movie because it just brings you back to a time that's so innocent. Are you talking one, two, or three, or yes? I'm talking the original, just the original. Okay. With two and three, I, I you know. Okay, so. I, I, I love them. I would we're, we're Back to the Future, I think, is a perfect film. I, will, I think Back to the Future, almost a perfect film. Two and three are like, I love them. They're great B-plus films. I think three is actually better than two, yeah. but I enjoy them. I, and it's not going to be time capsule as in the way you selected it, and I think that's actually completely accurate it's more like for myself like that okay. movie i don't think it ever be redone no and i don't think you could ever recapture it and that's why i say it's a time capsule because it literally is a slice of a moment but and that's kind of what carry is yes but i i would only challenge back to the future because it is meant to be like that slice in the 80s that slice in the 50s it's meant to be these pockets of time so that was intentional is- yes, no, I don't know if the 80s part was being intentional because that was when they shot it. So yeah. I, is, I, mean, I don't know if story. that's the truth. So. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the whole point of the story. They go back and then the second one, they go to the future and go back, blah, blah. But even yeah. the future in the, in the, 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 you know, the future in the 80s definitely didn't happen. That was supposed to happen. Right, um, or 2015. Oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> right. I mean, come on now. <laughs> Let's be real. It's, you know, but... I, I, for me, that movie just evokes a certain something, and it when you look at you it, of you being in that age and everything that happened at that point. Yeah, and I think that that they're, they're, you can't recapture it. You can't go back. If they if they rebooted it, it wouldn't work. Right, but I mean, and you could even see- a sequel wouldn't work. Right, like nothing works. Just don't touch it. Another one, um, and I don't know that, I'm sure you've seen it, uh, My Girl. Uh, I've seen it a hundred years ago. Okay, but that is definitely a pocket of time. That one, I don't think they could redo it the same. I mean, if you brought My Girl up to today, all right, he has a bee allergy, so they'd have an EpiPen. They'd have all of this stuff. It's right. This, you know, and it's that moment in time and change and all of that thing, but it's so very much that time period yeah i can see that so um, it's very much the whole situation like there would be other things that you could do i mean a lot of films you can make cases for I'm like oh look now that you have gps it's it's this and that but it's <clears throat> the the nice thing you know when i look at movies and you look at movies now and, and you see them trying to incorporate social media i always go just don't just, right if you're doing it too much, it's uninteresting. Wait. If you ignore it, you can't. You know, you can't yeah. ignore it, but you can't. It, it's a balance because storytelling wise, you don't want to watch people on their phones all day long. No, that's just not what you want to see. So I always I said, get, I was like, the phones yeah. can help date it. But did you, you know about iPhones in movies, right? What? That iPhones are not, like, if you see somebody with an iPhone in a movie, they will not be the bad guy. There is something that they have worked in that they can, they will give them phones for production, but it can never be <clears throat> for a villain. So, Fascinating. Right? So if you ever see, and there's somebody and you're looking for the red herring or whatever, and you're looking for the switch somewhere in there, if they have an iPhone, they're not the bad guy. 
Wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Fun little weird tidbits that live up in my brain. So it is. I like right. it. <laughs> well, and you know, that's the funny thing. Like before, and I wrote this actually as a joke in one of my in my movie. Well, one of the one of the many movies, many, many, many movies I've written, but the one that's closest to production, God willing, hello Jesus. Um, <laughs> we actually had a joke in the end, and the main character is like, we need to go to the library, dig up the microfilm, do the research. And then the one girl and the main girl is like, or we could just go on Google. Right. Like, oh yeah, that works too. It's just a kind of a joke of all the old movies when you had to go back and even Scream, okay? Scream 3, I remember them going into the archives of, oh, and Carrie Fisher just happens to be stuck in this basement. She's like, well, if they're looking for this person, they're not, Maureen Prescott, they're not going to find it. Maureen Reynolds, they will. And she right. pulls out a folder of her headshots. I'm like, honey. So- on that note, Stop. there is a movie that's coming out next week, Last Night in Soho, and it's a psychological thriller. Yes, you're right. I want to see it. So good. So good. Not going to spoil anything. There is a twist, but because it's Edgar Wright, I'm going to have to watch it five times because you know he buries stuff all the way through right. the movie. But she's actually doing research on microfiche. What? Yeah. And I was like, holy crap, take me back to grad school. Thank you. Um, That's because funny. If, if, I mean, Google was around when I was in college and stuff, but not the same access to information as we have now. Like, it's amazing what we can research now compared to <laughs> 10 years ago. But, you know, it cracked me up that, but she's kind of an old soul in like 60s and 70s music and clothing and all of that stuff so going back to microfiche fits that character but at the same time why wasn't that digitized well that's the thing i mean you know it's funny even you know you even look at buffy the vampire slayer i mean this course is 90s but they're in the library and doing research on the library and you know you, there's it's something just to funny. it but but there's something there's something about researching and opening books that make it more real well, and I would always about, tell Oh, they're really students, researching. Like, you can, you can do online research. You can even use Wikipedia as a starting point, but that is not your source. So use mm -hmm. their references and go find the information. But now we have Google, so why? You know, people, <laughs> people don't... I know, I can't help it. I'm sorry. It's that or he's crying outside the door again. So... Listen, I'm all about kitties. Yeah. I know he's not your uh, your Theo, but you know. I miss my dog so much. I know You'll he's see. not even mine. He's my step dog. I call him my step dog. <laughs> but when it comes out, you should see Last Night <clears throat> in Soho. I actually really want to see it. Um, it looks amazing, and uh, there's a few movies actually that I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. There's some kind of good ones starting to pop up again, which is really nice because it's been a dread. Oh. It has, and I will tell you, next week I've got four screenings that I'm going to so far. And yeah, it's getting busy because you have the last two years of releases condensed pretty much into this year. I right. mean, I will say last year, the ones that got released may not have been released or gotten attention because of the bigger names. So, but now they're pushing everything else out before award season. So, yeah. I'm going to see the Wes Anderson film, which I think you really liked, French yes. Dispatch. Yes, I did. And I want to see, um, I do want to see Dune. I'm going to watch it. Uh, and I do want to see the Edgar Wright film. Mm -hmm. I hear that the Jessica Chastain movie, Eyes of Tammy Faye, is really good. That one is really good. Um, I want to see it. One coming on Netflix next week, The Harder They Fall. It's a Western with Idris okay. Elba and uh, the huge, huge cast that I can't remember anybody's name. I remember his, of course. But it's a Western and I liked it. Which, mm. it's not like our fathers and grandfathers Westerns, but it's right. actually based on real people, which makes it even more interesting to me. Because afterwards, I was looking up the names of these outlaws and they're actual people. They're Black outlaws we just never heard about because, you know, Clint Eastwood couldn't play them so right you know yeah. that one was actually good but that'll be on Netflix it's probably in theaters in LA today too because it isn't oh. quite but that one was pretty good too hmm. um and one other thing I wanted to talk about was the new Richard Pryor box set from Time Life oh I mean, did you get one it is no. so good 
He said he was it sending is, it, but it didn't show up. Oh, it's so good and so fun. I have a contest right now on my site, which probably will be ending by the time it airs, but it's it's really fun to see him and going back to to watching someone like him do all this work and and there's so much there it's like really a very very complete set and I was kind of trying to dive into it a little bit um it's really fun like I I've been really enjoying seeing that stuff I mean, amazing with time life some of those well, and time, are really cool yeah time life does a great job like did like, you get the Dolly Parton one? Oh, it was so good yeah. I thought I know and I love Dolly yeah okay I doesn't. mean you know she works nine to five it's a way to she make works more than nine to five. That woman doesn't, you know, sleep. But she who, doesn't sleep. She brought us the COVID vaccine. Right? Hello, Dolly. I mean, <laughs> no pun intended there, but a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But I mean, I don't know anybody that dislikes her. And if they do, I haven't heard of a good reason to dislike her. Right. You know, but she's, I mean, those sets are something. amazing. Those sets are so well done. And they, you know, I highly suggest checking those out uh, for the, all four of you listening. We had but, seven, um, thank you. Seven, seven people listening. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was so great and to see that set. And I love the Dolly set too. They do such a really nice job. It's very archival. So when they is your the, um, giveaway, when does it run till? I really don't know. Okay. I, I, it, that's a lot of work to look up the times. And I don't, I don't have the energy right now, but you can definitely check it. It's online. because this will be live on tuesday the 26th so it might be over you know it's cool but either way check it out month. Let, let people let our listeners get a chance to enter sure okay. uh, I'll, i i probably won't um but uh <laughs> oh god <laughs> mike <laughs> you know if four of you want to like to think it all uh, great. So you can but find no, Mike's I, I giveaway really... at MikeTheFanboy.com oh, if you can but... get to it before this episode airs. <laughs> before we announce before I announce it on the site on the web <laughs> podcast. It'll be it's already on the site. But whatever, you know, it's all good. But all seriously good. though, they do such a great job with their set. I the, the China Beach set is something that I um I, I still look at it's it's so well done and the they did the wonder year set that was just great too i didn't get um, offered those i think i got the robin williams set a couple years ago the robin williams one was really good they did they do such really good work they do and putting a good collection together for fans they put a really great collection together for fans it's the carol burnett stuff they've done over the years has been also really excellent the stuff i would never have seen right she's effing hilarious yeah. You that woman that. is, well, I did, but, you know, I don't know how many people know currently what an amazing comedian right. she is. Like how many people, like, you know what I'm saying? Like my sister's age or even my age, I was like, I don't, I didn't realize until I'm going back to it. Holy crap. She was funny. Right. She was so, so funny. And seeing some of this was really nice to kind of be able to go, oh my gosh, I can really appreciate this now that it gets lost over time. You know, you, you hit a certain era and it's gone. And, and speaking of and over kind of like, time and getting lost, a movie that is coming out, I think in December, the the Lucille Ball movie. Oh, I can't wait with Nicole Kidman. <laughs> I am so excited about that. Although I'm watching it uh, or watching some of these movies. I think this is a year of Oscar Isaac because he's in like four or five movies that I've seen like in the last couple months. But I was like, he would be a perfect Desi, but it's Javier Bodum. So yeah, I was like, okay, I see that too. But at the same time, Oscar Isaacs, I was like, mm. yeah, I could see both of them actually. Right. I'm I'm curious to see how Nicole Kidman does in that role. Um, There's a clip that they released, but I haven't really watched it because I'm hesitant on that as well. Yeah, the trailer they released really had very little. Yeah. From her part. They had a couple, they had one clip from the, the crushing grapes. I think they're waiting to push it out because if she does really, it's like, I, I was looking at uh, some of the Oscar sites and it's like, her name is bubbling under for best actress. Cause I don't really know what's going to happen. Right. You know, it was kind of like when Anthony Hopkins did Hitchcock. Everyone was like, oh, 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 he's going to be, but then they, they saw the film and it didn't really, the makeup wasn't perfect. And I actually really liked that movie, but right. 
he didn't he didn't get the nomination so they i think people are hesitant until they actually see it and something comes out and they're like oh my gosh here she is popping in i i don't dislike her as that role but i i don't think i think for me personally like deborah messing because she based her whole personality and acting on lucy made more sense to me like if you see her in will and grace she's just playing lucy let's be real yes she really is she really is and i mean they're i mean they not take some nods to it throughout the show occasionally yeah. but you know but i'm just like yeah i i don't know i mean it'll be interesting to see i think that comes out in december yes okay. well and it's interesting too because the oscar <clears throat> and award seasons are now longer because they're pushing them a little bit further into the year because of what yeah. happened with covid they might move them back eventually but for right now that's what they're doing but right i'm trying to see it does say 2021 december 10th is when that one's supposed to come out so. yeah i'm really excited about that one there's a, there's again i want to see that and there's a few other ones i was kind of like Ooh, that could be really fun right and i mean if you need an update on what's coming out i do always have an up-to-date movie release schedule on my site which that's is week99er.com it is updated. what was that becky i couldn't hear you <laughs> Come on, my hype man. Week99er.com and look for movie release schedule. And it I will love week99er.com. It's my favorite site ever. I know you do. That you used to send it appliances. Um <laughs> which I've killed recently, right. by the way. Oh wow, really? Yeah, the Instapot died, just flatlined. I never sent you an Instapot. I sent you a mealy pot. Close enough. But it's been yeah. replaced by an Instapot, so. As you should. I mean, the other one flatlines, and but it was out yeah. of warranty, whatever. Well, but there are actually, on November 1st, there will be a giveaway for some electronic spice thing on my site. So. Ooh, right? that's fun. Yeah. So I want some electronic spice thing. I think it's a Dune theme. It's a <laughs> Dune theme. <laughs> It could be a Dune theme today. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we've we've talked about Dune throughout the whole thing. Why not? I know. I mean, actually, this is the second week we've talked about Dune quite a bit. Wow. Um, and that, that actually brings us to next week. Yes. Because next week we're doing a special on Rocky Horror. And you said you have a friend that may be able to join us? Yeah, I haven't mentioned it one iota, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't done your homework. I'm doing all the tech stuff. I know. My friend Lisa Kurt Sutton is uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show expert. And I don't know if she'll be able to join us or not. I'm going to actually extend the invite at some point in my life. We'll see. Um, you should probably do it before next Friday when we're going to record. Yeah, I probably should. And so she knows everything. Say, She's just amazing. I'm not going to complain about only watching one movie this week. And not that I like two is too many, but with the amount of screeners I have right now, right. one is one is okay this week. So I understand. Yeah, and it's one that I well, have to watch alone because Jason doesn't find the love. He doesn't love the movie as much as I do. So, uh, well, don't dream it, be it. <laughs> anyway, so join <laughs> us next week when we talk about Rocky Horror Picture Show and. Hopefully Mike does his homework and brings an expert on with us. Maybe. But, what? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. We'll see. But until then, you can find us on almost every podcast platform there is out there. As well as on our website, unpaidmoviecritics.com and on YouTube. So we will see you guys next week. Peace.